Pas de juge. Josh, you still have that really interesting name again. What happened? I uh, Zoom has never figured out the bug. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I ran into somebody else from um, CNCF who actually has the same issue, and they've had the same experience. Zoom wow. can't figure out what's going on. I mean, like I said, the weird thing is, like, wow. I did a search of my entire file tree. And that string does not exist anywhere. Because it's it's not random, it's consistently the same string. It's like it's a hash of my name or something. All right, the artist formerly known as Josh. Cool. Yeah. MD5 Josh. Paris yeah. is, I believe, dialing in. Let me check to make sure that she needs that she's got what she's need. Let me check if the new setup has kicked in yet. Uh, it has. It uh, has, cool. Don't have a project board yet. Hmm. Uh, 
Um, so you may not see it if you, um, so immediately after the setting, uh, the settings kicked in, um, you would have received an email from the settings bot or pro bot or something like that um, to invite you uh, to the repo as an external collaborator. Uh oh. Because I'm not sure I received it. Okay. This whole business with, well, I mean, this, I guess this isn't GitHub's fault, it's a third party bot, but the whole business of needing to receive emails in order to do things on, on a web service. Technically, you may not. I think it sends the email, but you can probably also accept from uh, GitHub itself. Uh, apparently not, because that, that was the reason why I was asking is that I haven't gotten anything on GitHub itself. There's, uh, there's no notification. And when I actually look at the project, I still have no permissions. Gotcha. So. Let me check if there's like an invited thing. Yeah, because I don't know about anybody else, but I've received experienced fairly high rates of email going astray in the last two weeks. Uh, email, our, our real nemesis. Hello. Yes. Hey, you made it by phone. Excellent. I can't turn on my video though. It says some kind of privacy Just like error. You, uh, anyone like? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, y'all. That's uh, okay. You made it. hello. Yeah, you need CNCF needs to turn on the web client on the main meeting on the main settings, not the meeting settings. Um, mm -hmm. Because that might be better. Whoa. I didn't hear you, Amy. It was kind of robotic. I, I don't know that we can do that. I'll have to go work with IT. I will go do so. Okay. I mean, we turned it on on Kubernetes, so you're IT is technically managing ours as well. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just not seeing it. I'm gonna go take a look. All right, anyways, carry on the meeting as I go deal with like Zoom. Yep. And I can talk to folks too, Amy, if they uh, if they want to talk to me. Um, because right now it doesn't look like any Googlers are going to be able to participate in CNCF meetings unless we dial in from our iPhones or some other device. Uh, which sucks. I'll fix it. Give me a bit. Yep. All right. I'm sorry, y'all. Did I, what, did, what did I, what did I interrupt? I apologize. Um, Josh, check the chat. Uh, yeah, no, I, I actually found the email. It got sorted into one of my various GitHub notifications folders. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, now that I knew to look for it. Okay, cool. And Matt's, oh, and Matt is on here. Hey, Matt. Sorry about this. No problem. Yay. More. I, the last thing I want to do with my life is figure out Zoom, uh, I think. <laughs> uh, hold on. I'm, I'm trying to fix the privacy issue on my iPhone with the video, too, because I feel really weird and gross talking without video. Um, all right. So... Thanks y'all for coming. Sorry, I'm 10 minutes late to the show here. Totally apologize. Matt, um, the good news is I actually wrote down a ton of the questions that we kind of wanted to address on the agenda. Um, that's sort of like, a, it's pretty much a high level of, you know, what can we do for you as a GB rep, uh, especially maybe stuff that you were trying to do before we were 
a thing that like is contributor focused uh, that we can either take, co-own, own, whatever kind of thing. And then I also went through and combed your doc as far as like the older, what maintainers need doc. I wanted to a, see if there was an update there and see if you looked at any of the questions that were on there. S sorry, which questions? I, I didn't see any. On oh. the on the meeting agenda. Oh, sorry. sorry. Let me let, let me open it. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. I, I, I didn't. Yeah, and I didn't um, I didn't tag you in or anything. And we can go through this stuff individually too. So, um, I'm uh, looking at your. Okay. I'm looking at your maintainer, um, your CNCF projects, what, or CNCF, what do projects need ah. maintainer version? Okay, got it. Um, and, sorry, go and, ahead. Um, and then I was just going to ask some questions. One, is this the most updated one that you've done? Because I think this one was from maybe early 2019. Yeah, like looks like pretty much same time last year. I think, I think there might be one that has more comments. Um, let me, there was one that was sent out to the entire CNCF list. Okay, so cool. let me, um, let me just quickly try to pull that up one second. Sure. Um, and then uh, while you, while you pull that up for context for folks that are on the line right now, um, Matt is a GB rep. I don't want to speak for him. He can tell us what that means in a second. But the thing is, um, some of the GB reps take, um, you know, problems and issues and things like that to the governing board on behalf of maintainers. And so Matt has this like really cool already bird's eye view. So does Michelle Norali into like kind of what maintainers are looking for from projects. However, some of that stuff, a lot of it does include things that are outside of our scope. So I'm just bringing Matt here today so that we can hear from kind of a GD rep ex uh, experience, like what we should be focusing on, what things that they hear that we can start talking about programmatically uh, and things like that. And then I put some very specific kind of either questions and or like statements um, on the agenda as well about that doc. Yeah, so I guess what what would be the best way of approaching this conversation? Do you want to yeah. ask questions or yeah. I, do you want me to give like a little overview from my perspective? I'm happy do, to do whatever you think is best. Do a little overview because there are people on the phone that know a little bit not don't know enough about like what a gb rep is so give a maybe a little bit of an overview and then i'll ask you some of the direct questions sure cool. yeah so i mean just to be fully transparent my role in all of this is a little odd because i i do three different things i'm on the toc i'm the gb maintainer rep and i also you know basically lead envoy which is a very large project so um you know, I, I come at this from a lot of different angles. So I'm going to be perfectly honest in saying that it's very hard for me to disentangle all, all three of those roles. Um, so some of my answers are, are, are just going to be colored by the fact that I'm, that I'm doing all, you know, all of those things. Um, from the GB rep perspective, for those of you that don't know, the uh, CNCF um, essentially has a, a, you know, kind of a few different branches, if you will. There's the TOC, which is doing technical leadership. Um, there's the staff, which actually runs the plan. And then there's the governing board, um, which, you know, you can think of it like a board of directors. You know, they're helping to define budget and, and define strategy and those, those types of things. Um, the idea behind the GB rep is that uh, I was voted on by maintainers. So as a maintainer of a CNCF project, I was voted on to represent uh, the interests of maintainers on the governing board, you know, so that has implications around funding and those, those types of things. Um, does that give the type of overview that you were looking for, Paris? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. I'm like I was like struggling to find the mute on my birthday. Yeah, I know the the <laughs> Zoom app is just like what the hell. Anyway, 
Uh, yeah, so that is, you know, the high level situation. So I think what Michelle and I um, attempt to do is, you know, we attempt to funnel feedback from maintainers uh, to the governing board and potentially also to the TOC. I'm going to be totally honest in the sense that it is at times a struggle to get maintainers to provide feedback. Um, and, and this is, a, a, I would say, a constant point of tension um, between the CNCF staff and the TOC and um, you know, certain, certain members of the GB in the sense that <clears throat> There's, there's always this tension of trying to understand, um, like, are project maintainers, are they not asking for things because they don't need anything, or are they not asking for things because they don't know what they can ask for, or they don't feel that if they ask for something complicated, it would actually be resolved. So, um, you know, as it relates to this group or this SIG, uh, I, I think there are definitely a few common concerns that I can definitely talk to that I think this SIG could absolutely help with. Um, and I'm definitely happy to go into those or we can go through specific questions, Paris, whatever huh. you think is best. I definitely have specific questions. Do other folks have specific questions? I don't wanna dominate. So that's why I'm asking if others could go first. Okay. I think, I think you should see the conversation. Okay. All right. So I went through the older version of that doc, uh, not necessarily the updated one, um, but I think just skimming through, skimming through your updated one uh, as well. I think that most they're mostly the same. So yeah, what I it is. Yeah. Yeah. What I what I do want to say to other folks that are on the line is like funding and legal is definitely out of scope for us, and you're going to see a lot of that on the GB, and that is exactly like one of the main reasons why Michelle and Matt are like doing the GB stuff, or not you know not you necessarily doing it, but like the role itself. So that stuff is out of scope for us. So I just wanted to at least sidebar that. Um, so some of the other things that I thought we could help out with that really called out are things like the community growth consulting as well as the governance consulting. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted to see from you there if incorporating sort of an AMA into this meeting, obviously doing an open call for all maintainers, doing, you know, getting that kind of thing involved and having that AMA style once a month with the addition of a maintainer circle, which we can talk about in a second. Do you feel like that would be valuable to these folks? Yes. So I think, I think just increasing communication is the lowest hanging fruit that we can yeah, attack for sure. and it and, and it should be really easy i think this has already actually been asked for um there just is no good way for maintainers to even talk to each other right now i think yep. there's a cncf groups.io list but it's actually moderated by the staff which doesn't really make any sense so it's like figuring out even just from starters like a yep. a mailing list or private Slack room or something, right? Where yep. maintainers can feel comfortable talking to each other. And I would go as far as to say that that should be maintainers only, yep. maybe members of the SIG, but no, no CNCF staff, um, just to allow uh, an open and safe space for dialogue um, without any type of moderation. So that, that would be my first suggestion. And I think that's been asked for again and again and again. And if we can just make that happen, that would be super, super useful. Um, because that's just a place where people can ask, you know, it's like, ah, I'm having this problem like you know can you help me or do you have advice should i ask the cncf for this or should i deal with myself right so just having that safe communication space i think would be extremely useful i think that uh, could be good for the maintainer circle um because yeah. like if we want to chisel out ama time for this meeting specifically like amy and eor and stuff are like core to the team so we yep, should absolutely we, yeah so i'm thinking for like up this at least the sig strategy meeting that so then I feel like from a maintainer circle perspective, that really fits in well. Um, I'm going to jump to a maintainer circle question just because it's on the same topic, which is the definition of your main maintainer is different than mine. 
Yep. And I wanted to talk to you about that because the maintainer at CNCF level is like the people that vote on TOC, which is a very, you know, minimum number of people per project. In some cases, uh, you know, obviously others have more, but um, could we open this word up to include reviewers, approvers, people that are like making changes, um, sure. merging things, but would that make sense in this community? Meaning would that cause any right. kind of confusion or, and I'm also, I'm also interested in hearing from CNCF folks on that too, just because I know that naming things is hard. Like we already have this SIG confusion, like what's a SIG? Um, so I want to make sure that we start off on the right foot so that it's not like just some big, what the heck is this? To be perfectly honest, I have no idea actually how the CNCF determines what maintainers qualify for things like TOC voting and GP voting and things like that. So, um, I, you know, I, I, I think that there's a tension here in the sense that I, I think that one of the reasons that CNCF has been successful is that it doesn't, it doesn't have very strict requirements in terms of how projects actually govern themselves. And I don't know that we want to change that. Um, but I think one of the things that the SIG could do is to the extent possible, um, maybe recommend different different structures that would that would make it a little simpler to, um, you know, to have a cookie cutter experience if if a project right. wants, right? Yeah. Um, and, and and I think we're trying to do that across different SIGs, right? So for example, it's obviously not the not the provenance of this SIG, but you know we would like SIG security to have a um, exemplar security process, right? Um, that you know a project doesn't have to choose it, but it would be recommended that they do so. So I, mean, I I actually see it as there's, I mean, as far as governance, I see that we have two levels. As in, there are already some kind of vaguely defined governance requirements for graduation. Um, I'd like those to be less vaguely defined. Um, Sorry, are we talking about who is a maintainer or are we talking specifically about the graduation requirements? Well, you, you, moved, in, you moved into governance. Yeah, I, I actually have a lot to say on this topic. So, yeah. um, but I, I guess, sorry, just before we talk about that, which I think is yeah. a super important thing to talk about, I, I just wanted to finish like on the, what is a maintainer topic, which I, I think also needs some clarification. Uh, and I think that would be a very helpful thing that this group could tackle. And then it, it's anybody from CNCF on the line that has either suggestion or opinion or or anything to add about the definition of maintainer and or us using it to define more people than what CNCF defines it as? Um, so Ihor put a link in the chat that posts to the public maintainers list and everything that list also points back to the file about where we're getting these maintainers from. So I hope it's at least clear. It might not be okay. understandable, but at least it's a little. Yeah, I'm looking now, I'm sorry, I'm like, Still okay. on my, it's still on my iPhone. File. So, yeah, <laughs> it, it's basically besides every project besides Kubernetes includes the um, list of the of the project maintainers in the main GitHub repo. Uh, with Kubernetes, it's the stream. So that was how it was designed originally at the early days of this. So, so I think I would. I, I've seen this list in the past, and I think I would disagree with the way that it's at least on the uh, I, I know kubernetes is a special yeah. case but you know like having steering be the only voices um maybe we can have like voting officials or something like that are nominated by steering right that may be composed of of sig chairs technical leads uh sub project owners what have you um and 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 select a few additional of them um because you see other projects have maybe like some of them have on on you know upwards of 20 people right and not, not everyone's going to be a steering member and not everyone's necessarily going to become a, an owner for k community right which i think have been kind of the requirements for for maintainership here um so yeah i think that's something we should discuss eventually yeah i want to sidebar the kubernetes conversation though and we can take that up with steering 
Um, For sure. Because I think a lot of us are in agreement with you, Stephen. So, uh, but I do want to sidebar that for Kubernetes business. Um, yeah, no, I, I agree. I think that just like, for instance, I don't want to miss reviewers in the maintainer circle. And I think reviewers are an important component for us to grow within the project to become approvers and the people that ultimately do maintain the project. So um, that's why I want it to be a little bit more inclusive. Um, but I also don't want to be... Um, uh, like that's not the right word. I'm not. I'm not saying the right thing. I know, but I'm. I'm saying what I'm trying to say is like I don't want to be uh, use this word and be inclusive. And then when TOC voting comes around, people think that they're going to vote. So, I guess that's my like major point is that we're definitely going to hit eventually. It might not be tomorrow, but eventually we're going to hit some people being ticked thinking that they might be able to vote and they're ca being called a maintainer in one case and not another case. I think we're already seeing that because yep. I think we're, I think we're increasingly seeing projects that have sub projects. This is coming up with Helm, like it's going to come up with other projects. We actually have the situation with an envoy also because we, because we have sub projects. So, I mean, I, I appreciate that we have this spreadsheet, but I, I, I do think that, we're all in agreement that I think this SIG could play a very important part okay. in, in helping to better clarify this situation. Okay, I'll take a I'll take an action to keep this moving async uh, so we can keep this discussion flowing. And I also I think even have an issue about maintainer circle. And I think I even asked Zach too about like Zach with SIG docs and Kubernetes. Like I don't know if Zach's on. I can't see the participants list. No, Sorry. he's not. But like okay. shopping, yeah, shopping the maintainer yeah. definition. I saw that. Yeah. Shopping the maintainer definition, just because I already know we're going to have issues coming up. So I'll, yep. let's continue that async, um, knowing that a lot of us are in agreement that we need to figure that part out. Um, all right. And then, so the other areas, let's get into the governance part, because I know, um, yep. I know uh, Josh wanted to get into that. And um, Me too. Yeah. some of the governance, like either whether it's templates, whatever. Um, Josh, do you want to proceed with your question one more time, um, just to, to refresh? Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm uh, getting started with this. Um, you'll see there's an issue open. Um, I'm going to continue with the issue with starting to get a work in. There's basically sort of two portions to the governance effort. Um, portion number one is clarifying graduation requirements. Um, like we basically kind of have a graduation requirement for good governance, but it's not really defined as what is the minimum bar for good governance, which means that often when it gets discussed in SIGs or the TOC, it feels fairly subjective. And I think we can make it a lot less subjective. Um, the, um, um, and that would be sort of, you know, our minimum bar. And you can define it as things like, for example, we don't want a fully graduated project where 100% of the maintainers all come from one company. Um, the, um, so there'll be some diversity requirements and that sort of thing in there. Um, and then the second part of it is assembling a set of documents and recommendations and that sort of thing for projects to improve their governance. Um, you know, workflows, um, different ways that people can uh, select owners and maintainers um, across different projects. Um, the, um, um, you know, suggestions on how to hold transparent decision-making meetings, um, all of the things that you sort of need for successful open community project governance. Um, and particularly like the whole reason I got into this to begin with is we have quite a number of projects within the CNCF that started at a single company. They want to make them multi-company public projects, but they're not really sure how to proceed. So that's going to be my main focus and then moving into sort of broader, you know, other governance recommendations, but really looking at a lot of these smaller projects that want to move along and become more community oriented and just don't have the experience to know how. Yeah. Uh, I think from my perspective, there's a couple of different parts of this. Um, I think we really do have to dig in on 
to this portion of the graduation requirement. It's a it's a contentious point. It comes up again and again and again. Um, we're seeing this right now with both NATS and GRPC both both come to mind. Um, and I, I think from a from a foundation perspective, I think the you know this is obviously partly uh, this is partly a decision that the TOC is going to have to make, um, but I think this SIG will play a huge part in actually helping to shape that conversation. Um, so that would actually be one of my highest priority things to help with, is to try to drive some consensus around how we want to handle the maintainer diversity requirement. And, and by maintainer diversity, I'm obviously talking about multi-organization or multi-company. Um, I think that's part one, and, and, and I think that's probably the most urgent because that is causing some consternation right now. I think the second part is that as part of the incubation requirements and especially as part of the graduation requirements, there's this nebulous requirement of a quote healthy community right and that is fully subjective and I think like we're asking SIGs to do technology reviews. I really would love this SIG to whenever any project goes up for either incubation or graduation, I'd love it to do a community health assessment, right? And having some rigor around that, like some rubric, it will be very helpful because this is so, so subjective. And I, I, you know, we can sit on this call forever and talk about GitHub stars and other bullshit metrics, but it's like, I, I just, I, I, it, it frustrates me when we put up these slides and it's like, I have so many Docker downloads or GitHub stars yeah. or whatever. Like these are not, like these are not real, real metrics. Yeah. So. So it's like this group helping with that rubric, like super, super useful. Mm -hmm. um, and then just last thing that I would say is part three is I think a lot of maintainers of projects want to increase their community health, right? It's like they want more maintainers, but they don't know what to do. So part three is, which is some sense the hardest part is through maintainer circle AMA and we've talked in other calls about like job boards and you know there's lots of things that we can do from a SIG perspective um, to me part three is how, how do we help people um, get get more maintainers so I think those are the three things probably in priority order that are that would be the most important to me um, for my part I'm gonna start with governance because you have to start somewhere um, and because I'm currently helping along a couple of sandbox projects who are grappling with this, so I have to do it. Um, however, um, Red Hat has internally a community health measurement thing. Um, so one of the other things that I can actually do right away is put our thing in the repo so that if somebody can get to measuring the other parts of community health, you know, how do you measure it? How do you improve the various dimensions? Before I can get to it, they could actually have that um, as contributing material. Can we look at it before you commit it? Well, it's, you know, we just need a, a, um, a resources folder. Yeah, we've got um, the governance folder and templates. Yeah, but I mean, a resources folder for things that are materials that we are using, but are not our guidelines, if you follow me. So, so we'll go ahead and add it in there. Yeah, so my, this, this kind of leans into my suggestion of having the, um, I mean, some of the stuff that we, some of the stuff we're going to want to keep in SIG contributor strategy repo, but um, there's also the contribute repo um, that's probably more visible. Um, so I was thinking of like a, what does a community repo look like? Uh, like Kubernetes community repo look like in CNCF land. Um, so Ihor was saying that that is the contribute repo. So I would want us to get access to, and we can work on the GitHub stuff a async, but I'd want us to get access, uh, the same level of access to that as well. So we can start fleshing out that directory structure. So we're doing all of our policies and procedures in the SIG contributor strategy repo, and then doing everything, templates, and guidance in the contribute repo. Is that where folks are wanting to go? That sounds good, 
with me it, to start? It, at least? Yeah. Or... It sounds like things should only go over to the contribute repo when we feel that they are approved. Exactly. The, the, the fit and finish kind of like done, done. Yeah. yeah. I definitely have a problem with submitting one employer's guidance as rule. Like, I feel like that's why I feel like we should make it less red hat. Um, like, I'm not going to, like, I, have I, a I ton. don't have to share it if you don't want it. Yeah, I mean, that, that might, might, I'm, I'm cool with it. I'm just saying I would, I would rather us be a little bit collaborative than like for me well, to we're talking. We're I, talking about resources. We're talking about materials for us to mine. I guess, yeah. It's just, again, like we're talking about like, like we, we just I mean, get if, into these yeah, hairy yeah. conversations with yeah. like company yeah. diversity already. And like, then we're just like putting resources in a folder right. that are like talking about those companies. I don't know. Maybe we should just like create a doc then and not check them in. Um, yeah. That's just would, my take. I don't know about anybody else's take. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, I think we should, we, we should do some, some type of review. So we can talk about the provenance, but I would copy them into a doc or put it in Markdown or something yeah. where we can actually comment on it. Are you yeah. right? Because I mean, what, what Google has <laughs> private stuff as well. So I mean, we can, I can give like Google's open source playbook that because it's already open sourced. So I, I'm um, really not understanding what's wrong with having a resources folder in the repo that is materials that we're drawing from, from all kinds of different sources. So, I mean, as so long as companies, drawing... from public sources, from everywhere. So I think it's, I think, I think uh, as long as the provenance of these resources is clear and that we're saying that this is not our guidance necessarily. If we have a, if we have a doc that says like, this is our guidance for community health right. assessments and, and, and governance models and all that stuff that is born from these documents that are clearly linked out to where they come from. I think that's fine, but I, I agree that we should shop this internally, SIG internally before it goes anywhere. Not the Red Hat document, but the document that would be born from oh, yeah. aggregate of lists, right? aggregate mm -hmm. of sources. I don't know. I guess I just have been around this block a time or two and know that companies will fight to put their resources in there if they see other companies putting resources in there. Um, and then it's going to be a, why is not my company have resources in here uh, kind of thing. So um, I don't want us to be aware of that. There's seven of us on the call. We're not exactly drowning in input right now. I mean, I'm not saying that we're drown that we like that it's an issue. It's just that I know how these things go. And like we say that it's only seven of us right now, but when we get kicking and things get like, you know, whatever, I mean, it's a, it's a easy question for somebody to ask us, like, why is there only Red Hat documentation in this resource thing um, or whatever? So I don't know. That's my, that's my thing. Like I would, I guess I would just rather have a doc with links and stuff like that to already open source resources. Um, that's my take. But um, if everybody else disagrees, then by all means, enjoy a resource folder. Yeah, I, I, I think we're a little early on to be fighting about stuff yeah. like this. <laughs> so yeah. um, my, my personal advice is to start with a doc and let's just gather some links from everyone that's interested. Um, and what, what I would hope that we would do is that we would end up with some markdown or a final doc yeah. or something yeah. that actually is the product of the, exactly. aggregate group, 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 the aggregate group of people. Exactly. Yeah. And, I, but my, and my thing is too, I'm like, I just think that people are going to see resources as resources for them. And they're going to be poking around in our stuff. And like the media does too. And like, I think like if we do have a resources folder, please just include a readme that says these are not, this is not our guidance, et cetera, et cetera. So that people are extremely clear about that. Um, but I agree. Like I was going to also bring up that we needed like a, a doc with like links and stuff like that for us. So yes, it's needed. I just don't know just from a perception standpoint, I don't want folks to, to go that way. All right. Josh, did you have any more governance stuff that you wanted to address with Matt specifically? No, no, we're just getting, we're, you know, 
we're just getting started. Um, I, the, um, um, I do actually like, so, because we're sort of seeing governance is subsumed in something else. So I'm actually going to move stuff because I think you got the right term there, which is general community health, right? Of which governance is a component. Um, so, because um, previously we had the name of the overall goal as diligence. And I think calling the overall goal community health actually better encompasses everything that we want to cover. Um, <clears throat> all right. Uh, so the re some of the other questions that uh, that I had listed for Matt specifically, um, things that we could help out with, some of the end user stuff as well. Like you called out like uh, templates for adopters.md and stuff that's similar yeah, to that. Is that, that is, still yep, that is one that is one that comes up a ton. I, I, I don't know where that fits, like if it fits here. I, I think it's a little soft in terms of fitting, but maybe. Yeah. Um, but this is a persistent problem where, you know, we have usage requirements, particularly at the incubation and the graduation level. Um, some ability to facilitate how we do that. And again, some more structure than we have, I think would be useful. The question no, about Wait, 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 please let me jump in. I've been trying so hard to jump in. So there are a couple different parts of CNCF that are responsible for helping shepherd people through the uh, TOC, like incubation, et cetera, process. Does our SIG fall into that, yes or no? I think yes. So from what I was saying before, I, I personally believe- I, We just passed. I don't know. I, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. I will. I will. I will talk less about the charter and and just from my my perspective, is that I actually think that this SIG is involved should be involved in every incubation and graduation review, um, and and mostly around the checks around like doing a review um, and some due diligence on the governance process, maintainer diversity, the community health. Um, and, and, and like I was saying before, having some rubric, which is slightly more defined than the literally random gut check that, that we use right now, because that is honestly what happens right now. It's a bunch of us just like eyeball some stuff and say, ah, is it healthy? And we use our own completely subjective measure of that. Yeah, my point was is that there's been um, content kind of spread out. Like you mentioned people were putting up GitHub stars, for example, on their thing. The only reason people do that is because there isn't a template that says totally. what to an issue totally. should look like or that now it's a PR, but whatever. Um, this is what it should look like. And so you look at a previous one and then you go, okay, well, someone else had stars. I'll do stars. There's been an open issue for months about having a template and there isn't one yet. And like, that's something that we should, we should take on then and go, this is what a template should look like for submitting to incubation or to uh, so, um, so. the next levels, uh, in addition to adopters and a couple other things then. Like, so cause they kind of have, like they don't have a home now. So if you say that it's part of our charter, then I think we should kind of like grab some of those other stragglers that our people have said they want to do. And everyone has been searching for, for months. Cause like there's been churn um, and kind of bring it in and like make it part of our wheelhouse. Yeah, so let's let's pick it up. I see the I see the um, you know some of what we're doing funneling into. Okay, we make it easier for SIGs SIGs to do their due diligence that uh, eventually escalates to TOC and then becomes you know does or doesn't become a project. Um, I would also say that there's a lot of um, I think that the TOC list is is the, a fun place for chatter about about how some of these things function. And you know, as someone who's like, we're we're working on submitting decks as you know as for for sandbox right now, and um, I jumped around like a million pages trying to figure out like how I was supposed to do it. I opened an issue. Amy was like, hold on, can you do it as a PR? And 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 then got point pointed to a separate, you know, set of documentation about how to do this thing. But, you know, some of it's buried in, maybe it's buried in like how the TOC operates, right? Um, which is not necessarily the first place that someone's going to jump into. But I think that we should also try to uh, channel these voices that are jumping in on the mailing lists and stuff like that and put them to work. 
right? Like you want to see a template, like, okay, we'll, we'll put out a template, but if you have thoughts on how this template should go, let's work to like, you, there's, I, I know there's at least one or two people on mailing list talking about processes and they're like, okay, draft a document. Tell us how, like, tell us how it should go. Right. So I, I think we can, I, I think we can, um, I, I definitely think we should pick it up. Um, Cause I think for what it's worth. Yeah. I, my, my personal experience so far is that um, the people that actually write the docs, like they're the ones that actually make things happen. So I would, I would strongly suggest people to pick, pick, pick the things that are interesting, whether it be in this area or some other area and let's actually type out some straw proposal and actually talk about it. Uh, because we can we can go back and forth and talk about um, not very specific things all day, but if we can just get something on paper, uh, I think I think it will lead to process improvements. On. All right. Um, all right, and then like on the templating front, we can also do contributor guides and things under like the contributor growth working group. Uh, that's like super e not, I, I, I don't want to use the word easy. I'm saying easy for us on the line. A lot of us have done contributor guides and things like that, meaning easy for us to populate like good templates and resources and things like that. Um, and then I did want to take a note. Um, you have obviously CI and CI being expensive and you're, you're like what maintainers want. I was also going, uh, going to ask you what you think about um, maybe helping out with identifying triage guidelines or teams or roles and how to set those up so that they can save either money or, you know, save the rejection hotline for getting more expensive CI. Is there, is anything in there valuable to projects or no, not really? I mean, I, like it, it might be, I think that's why we did the whole special needs proposal. Um, and mm -hmm. I, I okay. guess, I, I, I guess I, I view those instances to be a little farther apart. So if, if I were honest, I just feel like if this group has limited time, I think it could be fully occupied with all of the stuff that we've already talked about around governance okay. and community health and those types of things. And my personal feeling, and this doesn't obviously have to be the way that the group goes, is that I would rather focus 100% of the effort on nailing those things because I think they're the biggest yeah. need, you know, which is the defining the graduation requirements, the community health, um, DD, and then the how do projects help them increase their maintainer ranks. I, I just feel like those are the biggest needs right now. So, yeah, I, I kind of agree there too. I think it would be nice if we could get together as a group and determine what our definition of like done is at least to start, right? Because like, at that point, if we lay down enough documentation to say that we should start heavily recruiting people for this group to work on improving that documentation, um, then we should find a point at which we should do that, right? Because we're, we're already planning to recruit for the maintainer circle, and and you know, it it we could assume that some of those maintainer circle people might eventually become uh, contributor strategy members as well. Um, so I think we should try to and. I mean, I, I think we're all uh, oversubscribed in, in some ways. Um, so I think we should find where we're happy with opening the gate for everyone else, um, as long as we've laid down something really good to start. Yep. That's why I think we need to get all of our working groups up with readmes, get all of our documentation in order before we open the gates. Because once we open the gates, y'all know how it works. Like. Mm -hmm. People are going to be like, well, give me a project or give me a task. And then you're like, here's this ambiguous thing over here. Uh, <laughs> so we'll be like having our own meta issues that the rest of the projects are having. <laughs> All right. I think that was it for my questions with Matt. Does anybody else have Matt related GB rep questions? Because I feel like we got a lot. I, just a general thank you. You're doing a whole bunch and across yeah. a bunch of different groups. Um, and I saw like when you were when you were uh, up, I guess applying or or, or you know uh, for for GB and and all the stuff that you said around wanting to make the community better. So so thank you for the work that you've been doing already. All for also helping with this. Um, I, I I think this is one of the most high leverage things that we can work on right now.
So, yeah. yeah. And do you have any questions for us? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, again, this is an area that I'm personally passionate about. So um, my, my suggestion is what we were saying before is I think the group will be more effective if uh, we pick a small set of things and try to okay. actually do them. Right. So, um, you know, I, I think like starting on a, um, you know, like a, a what what is done list or something along those lines, like what, what does success mean? I think would be useful yeah. just because these types of things, frankly, they can devolve into a lot of meetings and talk, but not not much action. And yeah. I would I would hate to see that happen. So just setting a few specific goals and, and figuring out how to make that happen would be great. Yeah. I feel like this crew too could be a little bit more on the conference driven development end too, because I feel like we should use like the KubeCon channels to get the word out about a lot of this stuff. Yeah, so, sure. Um, Absolutely. I'm, that, that is not my advice for code generating folks, by the way. Yep. Uh, do not do conference driven development. Please don't um, in that case. But I feel like in, in our case, we could kind of have those as mild as have those as our milestones, for instance, and not like release milestones. And, and there, there are things even from the conference perspective that I would love to do, which we don't do right now. It's right. It's like, for example, why at KubeCon do we not have a maintainer happy hour slash meetup slash lunch slash breakfast or something like that, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just, there's such low hanging fruit here in terms of getting some of these people to actually talk to each other that we're not doing right now. So I feel like this group can drive some of, some of those things in terms of mailing lists and meetups and yeah. just get people talking would be a great improvement. Yep. All right. We, we've got a ton. I'm taking some notes too. All right. Yeah, we've got a ton and I think our, it sounds, I think our crew right now, does anybody on the line feel like they have no idea what to do next? Because I think right now we want to launch some of these working groups officially, get some of that stuff kicked off. I know we've got some kick, smaller kickoff meetings with like the end user stuff and with contributor growth like Carolyn and Karen. Um, so we'll kick those off next week. And then I, I maybe in their, in our smaller working groups, we can talk about what done looks like for each of us and then come together ne in the next two weeks at the next two week meeting and talk about some of like our first deliverables. Is that cool with everybody? I, I have a mini right. bike shed. Are, are we calling them working groups or sub projects? I know, I know. <laughs> You know what? So <laughs> Kubernetes calls them sub-projects. CNCF calls them working groups. Matt, how much leverage do we have changing the word SIG here? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just don't have time for this stuff. <laughs> I, you, can, you, can, you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I will Naming second that. Naming is so hard. It's <laughs> fine. Right. Just, just, just pick, just pick whatever it. you all want to call it. It doesn't just matter. Like, just do oh, it. Just do right. it. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, no, I mean, I just, well, I, I I've been saying clear working. and available to people. Sorry, make it clear and available to people that when you're arguing something like this is where you should go for that, whatever it is called is whatever you need to call it. It's fine. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the only I, the only issue that we've had to date is just the fact that they're called other things in other projects. That kind of like discrepancy. It's like I agree with you, and like if you're clear with someone on what the hell it is, do it. Um, but like, I think that might also be a cause for like a, a reason why the SIGs at the CNCF level have not had, uh, you know, or you know, the folks that are saying that they don't have enough, you know folks in there helping them. I'm wondering it's just if there's this just general um, confusion around the term SIG and what the heck a SIG does and stuff like that at the CNCF level, by the way. That's, um, so anyway, that was my bike shot. Have a nice day. Oh. <laughs> so uh, contributor growth folks, FYI, there's a doodle in the Slack. I'll put a doodle on the mailing list as well. 
um, end user folks. We are sort of uh, uh, on pause-ish, but we should meet anyway. That's Eeyore and um, Steven. Um, any, and then governance, Josh, who, who is signed up to help you? I think there was, you had one person that was like really gung-ho about governance stuff. Was that Steven too? Yes, but no. Um, I, <laughs> like I, I only added Josh to the governance subproject within the README right now because um, he was the only clear owner. Okay. Yeah. All right. It was, Josh might. Okay. Do you have you have folks helping you and stuff like that to get this off the ground? Nope. Do you want help? All right. <laughs> Do you need help? Um, not. Now I'm As much as <laughs> I as much as I love you, I know what your cue is. <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn or um or maybe you know Karen's not on the line right now um Karen might want to help yeah. um is and there... there's some other folks that are not on the line right now and I know April my coworker, yeah. wants to help so uh she's not well, on the line right now either so for that matter we, I can got just some do folks. a few shout outs in CNCF slack and see if anybody turns up yeah um cool all right that's it for me y'all anybody else have anything Go team. I know there's a lot to do y'all, but I'm actually excited. I'm so excited. I, just, I always say that, but I just want to say it one more time. I'm really excited. I, I think this, this SIG has the opportunity to have, I think a very, very large impact. So uh, it, it, it's very exciting to me to actually see this being worked on. Yay. Yeah. I am too. All right. Great. That's right. it for our Thursday call. Thank you. Bye. Right. Yep. See you in two weeks, y'all. Yep. Bye, Matt. Later. See you, everybody. Bye. Bye, everyone.